Good evening. My name is Peter McDougal. At least it is now. I have also been called a geek, a nerd, a geeky nerd, a nerdy geek, and a geeky geeky nerd nerd. But for most of my life, I've been known as P.D. Falcone, son of Jimmy Falcone, one of New York's most notorious mobsters. But despite what you may have read about my father, he's actually been a very loving man who would do anything for his family. Strike three, you're out! Uh, I mean, home run! But then one day, the mob turned against him, as mobsters are prone to do. And they didn't care if they got any of us in the process. But he protected his family and heroically helped convict some of the most horrible men in the country, all of whom were at my communion. And that's how we wound up here, in witness protection in Regina, Regina. Saskatchewan. And if any of you think this story wasn't just one humongous rationalization, Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it! Forget about it! Forget about it! I got here as soon as I could, Jimmy. What seems to be the problem? I miss pizza. I beg your pardon? You made it sound like an emergency. It is. See, I'm in this weekly poker game and the guys order these pies, like ketchup on cardboard, and not the good kind. So I was shooting my mouth off and promised to show them real pizza. So I'm kind of committed. You should be committed. And where do you intend to get these pies? That's the beauty part. I know this place back home, best pizza outside of Italy. And they promise delivery in 30 minutes, so they're free. So odds are we won't even have to pay. I'm sorry, no. Such an order may tip off your enemies. As for poker, need I remind you of the pitfalls of gambling? Aw, oh, man, don't you do anything for fun. I absolutely do. I fish, I hunt, I read, I enjoy the occasional menage a trois, I dabble in embroidery and crochet, but what I don't do is gamble. A hundred bucks says you do. <sighs> All right. I know your secrets. It's time you learned one of mine. Whoa! I don't want to know who you manage a trois with. Imagine, if you will, a young McCool. Aimless, directionless, muscleless. And then he discovered the wager. At first, it was just harmless games of gin rummy for a penny a point, but soon that wasn't enough. It had to be a quarter, a dollar, a hundred, nor did it matter what the game was. Cards, dice, ponies, pigs! Suey, suey, suey. Why do you look like a hippie if it was the 90s? Stay on topic, Jimmy. Never in my life had I felt such a rush. I was hooked. I'd go on week-long binges and forget to feed horse. I put my sainted mother in a home and lost her rent money at the track. I turned my back on almost everyone I cared about, and they me. And I was about to lose the only one I had left. Don't go. Without you, I have no one. You're right, I'll never bet again. I know I've said this before, but this time I mean it. Yes, really. And that was the moment I vowed to put my life together. The moment I decided to be a Mountie. And I have not wagered a penny since. I just got one question. What kind of landlord lets you keep a horse in your apartment? Indeed. For Canada! And flashbacks that remain relevant to the storyline! Isn't it a glorious day in Regina? The sun is shining, the snow is melting. One can look out and see endless miles of wheat and wheat. What's up with you? Petey's got a girlfriend. Shut up! Oh, a girlfriend. Tell me about her. Her name's Rita. They kissed in the parking lot behind Mrs. McGeeby's car. Shut up! Ow! Don't ever tell me to shut up. Hello? Yes, Petey's here. Who may I say is calling? Oh, Rita! Petey speaks so highly of you. Mother, no! He speaks highly of us, too. Oh, get the f*** out of here! Mom! Ow! What was that for? Don't ever hit my big brother, you little squirt! Okay. 
Thanks, Gina. That was really... Two bucks. What? Two bucks! Uh, okay. So, Rita, what are you doing next Sunday? Would you like to come for family dinner? Rita, say no! Run! Good. We can't wait to meet you. Bye-bye. Oh, did you want to talk to her? That's okay. I'm gonna go take a bath. Race five. Shua, shua. So sorry to disturb, Premier. These documents just arrived from Ottawa for your immediate attention. Keep your knickers on, laddie. I'm playing. Put them with the others. All right, Jimmy, you Scottish bastard. It'll cost you five more if you want to see my cards. Or do you not have the balls, you nutless lassie? I see your five and raise another five. Fold. Read them and weep. Kings and nines. Three ladies. Sounds like my crib every night. Hey-o. <gasps> Grab a chair, McCool. We need some fresh blood. Uh, thank you, sir, but I don't gamble. Come on, McCool. The engine's taking everything we got. And how often do you hear that? Fellas, if the man don't gamble, the man don't gamble. Schwa, schwa. Where I come from, the only man who don't gamble are ladies. Well, I suppose one hand won't hurt. Uh, Jimmy, I'm a little short on cash. Would you extend a man a small loan? You sure you want to do this? What about everything you said the other day? I've been thinking about that these past few seconds. I haven't gambled in almost 15 years. Clearly a man with a gambling problem couldn't achieve that. Okay, I'll give you a friendly loan at 18%. But this is business. No one's gonna take it easy on you, not even me. Jimmy, if I enter that game, it's you and the others I'd be worried about. Any up, boys, it's my deal. Gentlemen, I don't even have to look at the cards. I look into your eyes and I know what's in your mind. You want us to think you made your straight, but you never got the nine. You made your trip sevens, but you don't know if they're good enough. You're bluffing with an ace-king high and you're cheating on your wife. You're disgusting. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? <laughs> I see your ten and raise ten more. What are you doing? Nothing. Just a long blink. Open your eyes. No. All right. I still think you're bluffing. Call. Full house. And finish blink. Raise 500 and that should send you home. Jimmy, you just walked into my trap. I see your 500 and I raise you 10,000. <gasps> Bloody Ouch. hell! Shwa, shwa. Buddy, you're already into me deeper than you want to be. What's the matter? Are you chicken? McCool, you don't got this one. Buck, 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 Look, buck. You started strong, but now Lady Luck is banging another guy. Oink, 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 oink. Just walk away. Moo, moo. Who you calling a cow? All right, you got it. Ten G's more. Four kings. Four aces. What? You owe me 50 large, special agent. I... I... I don't have it. Then I'll put you on a plan. In the meantime, I'll take some collateral. No, not horse. What have I done? <clears throat> I tried to warn you, buddy. Now I own you. For Canada! And... Yeah, I'll, I'll just walk them out from here. Hey, Cheech! I'm making a list of stuff to ask for from McCool. He can't pay us back, so he's gotta let us do whatever we want. What should I put you down for? A puppy. You don't need McCool for that. You can get a puppy anyway. Can I? No, because I'd have to walk it and clean up after it. I'm thinking more like taking a family on a cruise. Me included? Yeah, you included. Then who's gonna watch the puppy? There is no puppy! Jimmy, what kind of sad childhood did you have that you hate puppies? Hi, I need your help. How do I get Rita out of coming for dinner? Why do you want to do that? Because she's Persian, and you know how our family is with people who are different from them. But what's wrong with being Persian? Everyone loves Paris! No, not Parisian. Persian! Iranian from Iran? Oh, you mean like one of those chicks who straps bombs on her chest and goes into nightclubs? I never got that look. No, that's what I'm talking about! That's racist! You take that back! Racism is ugly, and I'm pretty! Mom! Petey said we're racist! 
And I'm pleased to say I am no longer gambling and I'm ready to pay my debt. You're a little light. Uh, the ATM was out. Bank messed up the transfer. Checks in the mail? You don't think we heard these before? Dog ate it. He has a dog? All right, I don't have it all. But I'm doing the best I can. I understand. It's a lot of money to get all at once. So, in lieu of cash, there's a number of favors you can do for us. That's blackmail. You owe me 50 Gs from gambling. Want to take that up with your supervisor? Jimmy, please, don't do anything rash. I've taken on a whole array of extra jobs. I'll get you your money by any means necessary. Except crime. How do you make money without crime? Indeed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to attend. I miss you, old friend. <coughs> I deserve as much, but I shall get you back. For Canada! Oh, where these boots are made for walking. Are you satisfied with your long-distance carrier? Stand. I don't believe it. I know! They printed my letter! Not that. That's McCool on the cover. I can't believe he'd stoop this low for money. It's really sad. Jeez. I don't know if I should feel bad for the guy or intimidated. There you are. Did you know your son is ashamed of us? What? Petey, get down here! Yes, Pop? Your mother says you're ashamed of us. What the hell's that about? Okay, I'll be honest. This girl I like is coming to dinner, and she's Middle Eastern, and I'm terrified that you, one of you, most likely you, will offend her, and she'll come to hate me for it. Petey, you gotta relax about this stuff. When I was growing up in the old neighborhood, we was all everything. We was all friends. It didn't mean nothing. We called each other Dagos and Hebes and Mix and N-words. You actually used the N-word? Yeah, but only to their faces, never behind their backs. That would be insensitive, something a spick would do. Ugh. You see? Your father makes good sense. Mother, a turban? Really? It's not a turban, it's a towel. Yeah, what's wrong with having a towel head? You guys are killing me. Nobody's killing nobody. Just let me frisk this girl when she gets here. No bomb, no problem. Special Agent McCool can't come to the door right now. Please leave a message in the mailbox. We know you're in there, McCool. No, you don't. He's got a point, Jimmy. Can anyone ever really know anything? McCool, you can't avoid us. It's your job to take care of us. My next payment isn't due until tomorrow. We ain't here for the money. Oh, in that case, may I interest you in some Helen DiCarlo cosmetics? Jeez, you look like hell. Have you lost height? Let me go get my samples. I'll be right back. Look at him, Cheech. He's a shadow of his former self. No dignity, no self-respect. He's given up on everything he cares about. And it's my fault. So? Just saying. All right. Who wants moisturizer? McCool, sit down. You know that list of requests we gave you? I think we was thinking too small. First, we'd like to go visit the old neighborhood. Jimmy, you know that's impossible. Then pay up. Fine. I'll work it out. Also, maybe a cruise. Fine. And a puppy. Fine. No puppy! Fine. Come on, McCool, pull yourself together. You're making me feel bad. Where's our usual back and forth of Tony Banter? You know what, Jimmy? You're right. Good, let's get back to it. So, if they do another one of those private rocket ships to outer space, I think Petey would like that. No, no to everything. It all stops now. Yeah, this is what I like. You and me going at it, mambo a mambo. Now my turn. You want me to take this up with your supervisor? You don't have to, Jimmy. I will pay you what I owe you, but I will besmirch my uniform no more. As of tomorrow, I will resign my commission as a Mountie. Holy hell. Bum bum bum. 
Jimmy, look at this. I'm talking to a squirrel. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, you should have seen the guy. I know it's hard to imagine, but he looked bad. Real bad. It is hard to imagine. <laughs> I never should have lent a guy with a gambling problem all that money, and then I pushed him on top of it. He's a stand-up guy for a cop. He's always been fair to us, and we could do a lot worse. Even his quitting shows a little back bacon. That's how they say it in Canada. Jimmy, are you developing a conscience? Conscience? Nah. I just got this inner sense of right and wrong that's impelling me toward moral action. What are you saying? I broke him, so I gotta fix him. I'm gonna let him off the hook. Wipe the slate clean. You really are a lovable teddy bear. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Mommy! Daddy! I can't sleep! What's wrong, sweetheart? I heard you and Daddy talking through the wall, and Daddy says he's gonna let someone who owes him money not pay? I don't understand! I'm scared! Oh, sweetie, there's nothing to be scared of. The man owes me more money than he's got, and it's destroying him. He's doing it again, Ma! He's doing it again! <laughs> oh, sweetie, it's a sin to let others suffer. Oh, like a hurt animal? Then we gotta do the Christian thing and put him out of his misery. Let's whack him. Aw, oh, Gina. That's very generous of you, Jimmy. I would be forever in your debt, and so I cannot accept. No strings, honest, and the blackmail stops. You can stay a Mountie. It's more complicated than that. To recover from my addiction, I have to take responsibility for my actions, even if that means doing shameful, shameful things. And eh, no one's gonna buy that magazine. Really? Tell me the truth, Jimmy. Do you find me attractive? Okay, we're not going there. Isn't there anyone you'd be willing to take help from? Only a true loved one. But I have no siblings. Daddy left when I was very young and Mummy lost her marbles. All I had was horse. Tell you what, don't quit your Mountie thing just yet. Give me till the end of the week. Can you sign this? Certainly. You want a party? Certainly not. Well, define party. I still don't get it. It's simple. McCool won't let me forgive his debt, so he's just gonna have to find the money on his own. He'll give it back to me, and everybody's square. I have found a satchel of money on the street. It must be returned to its rightful owner. What an asshole. I can't believe it. You try to help a guy, and it bites you in the ass. Well, you know what they say. Try to help a guy, and it bites you in the ass. The funny thing is, I still want to figure out a way to help him. I'll get it, I'll get it. Hi, Petey. Thanks for inviting me. Is that her? I'll be right out. Look, there's no time to explain. Just don't judge me by my family. And whatever happens, I'll protect you. And no, I have no idea why there's a horse in our living room. Hi, you must be Rita. I'm Cookie. She's adorable. Yes, she is, yes, she is. Come sit. Dinner will be ready in about 10 minutes. So, Rita. Tell me about yourself. What would you like to know? I don't know what I'd like to know. What do your parents do? I knew it. Just because she's from the Middle East, you automatically assume her parents must be terrorists or taxi drivers. I never said- My father is a dentist and my mother is a stay-at-home mom. And no, it's not because her father will punish her mother if she works, thank you very much. Two of my wives were stay-at-home moms. Well, without the kids. <laughs> Basically, they were leeches. <laughs> Your uncle's funny. Not really, just retarded. So, Rita, are you thinking about college yet? Why? Because Muslim women aren't allowed to go to school? They're just supposed to stay home and be subservient to their man? Is that what you're asking? I give up. Jimmy, you want to ask her anything? Okay. Rita, say something you did is destroying a guy, and all you want to do is make peace. But he don't want peace. He just wants to keep the same old pattern going. What do you do? What's that supposed to be? Some warped metaphor of the Arab-Israeli conflict? Rita, hi. I love what you're wearing. What'd you expect? You people! What, she was supposed to show up in a burqa and a turban going... Petey, enough! Can you talk about anything other than my race? Me? Race? That's it, a race! Yes, Petey, I'm Persian, and that's all you can see. But I'm a real person with real feelings, and you've done nothing but make me uncomfortable since I got here. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal. You all seem lovely, but I don't think I can stay for dinner. And by 
the way, there's nothing wrong with driving a taxi. It's an honest, decent living. And yeah, I lied. My father drives a taxi. You dirty, racist snob. <laughs> One way or another, them Arabs always explode. Look, he won't take the money from me. If I just give it to you, he'll know it came from me anyway. You gotta get this money on your own. I know he broke his promise to you when you're mad, but he's your best friend and you're all he's got. So you can stay mad at him or you can help him. His life is in your hands. Or you can keep bunking with Cheech for the rest of your life. <gasps> Whoa! I've never been with a four-legged broad, but I'm open to anything. Don't kiss, please don't kiss. How you doing? Good? Yeah, well, if I asked you that question in the old life, I wouldn't know if you was actually telling the truth. Cause back then, you couldn't trust nobody. For he's a jolly good fellow, we can't afford happy birthday. For he's a jolly good fellow. Blow out your candles, Jimmy. <gasps> <laughs> Most guys learn not to trust people by getting screwed over, but it was birthday cake that taught me. You know what? You blow them out. This guy, so suspicious. No one's gonna pull that trick again. Hmm. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> There's an expression. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I will rip your fucking ears off. Really? Do I look stupid to you guys? Your fucking cake! It's okay. He missed my dick. Anyway, now that I live among the goody good people of Regina, I still don't trust nobody. Yeah, yeah, thanks to you, I don't got a spleen. Now, say the thing so we can go inside. Nah, you say it. Why should I say it? You say it. Oh, for Christ's sake, forget about it! <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. For Canada, where Canadians are from. That's awful. Where's the poetry, the insight? This is uninspired and lazy. Oh. For Canada, good start. Go Blue Jays, oh come on. I let you order Chinese and this is the best you can come up with. <laughs> Hi, low, low, blast. Even my phone greetings are terrible. We'll do those next. It's Teresa. I've been in a teensy little fender banger. <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> For Canada, where maple syrup lacrosse double-double? Oh, now you're just mocking me. <laughs> What's a six-letter word for hurry? No serious damage. Horse, get this out of the ditch, will you? Please don't tell my folks about this. Smooth Canadian club. Have you been drinking? I 
had one beer. I, I swear, I'm not... Blow. Hmm. You're not inebriated, but there's a hint of alcohol in your blood. Provincial law requires me to confiscate your license. I'm not drunk. I don't understand. No. Fortunately, I just completed an RCMP workshop on talking to teens. Ahem. <coughs> Word on the herd is short ones can't slop a jar of ski and skate the jam wagon, so mind your turnips, you silly frail. Teenagers don't talk like that. Hmm, the workshop did seem a tad outdated, especially the part about how bathtub gin leads to syphilis. Whatever, just please don't tell my parents about this. I won't, Teresa, but you will. <sighs> there you go, clumsy. Let's drive you home. No, we can't stop for drive through <laughs> Guess what? I won first place at the high school science fair. Sponsored by Wheat Corp, a subsidiary of Wheat Thin Enterprises. We have to say that last part or their lawyers come after us. Congratulations, Petey! What'd you do? You're stupid? Cause Cheech will buy it twice. I totally would. I designed a weight loss app that counts calories in food. I call it the Calogrammeter. 4,000 calories, jeez, Pop. How many calories was that, you food-shaming little jerk? 125. I hate to tell ya, but somebody already thought of that. Adolf Einstein. How was this possible? A product of Wheat Corp? Richard Wheaton stole my idea. Uh-oh, don't want to be late for school. 42 calories? I wouldn't talk, kid. I've seen you come out of the shower. At least mine has a mustache. I really don't want to tell my parents. Can we just forget it? I can't stop thinking about last night. The drinking, the blowing. <gasps> I, I didn't blow that bad. I'm sorry to tell you, but you didn't blow very well either. Oh, yeah? I don't think your equipment was working very well. My equipment may be a bit old, but I assure you it works just fine. Or at least it did before you got your teeth marks all over it. How could there be teeth marks? That thing was so hard. <gasps> In any case, if you don't tell your parents about your alcohol-fueled accident, I will. Now, if you'll excuse me. For Canada, where curling is looked upon favorably. All oh, these are atrocious. Thanks to Cheech needing a bath toy, my Virgin Mary statue ain't a virgin no more. You better step up, uh, Saint Polycarp of Smyrna. Tell me your troubles, my child. McCool's been fooling around with my teenage daughter. What do I do? Oh, uh, I, I can't help you. I'm, I'm the patron saint of earaches and dysentery. Dysent? You mean diarrhea? And earaches. I'm very good with those. If you eat bad Indian food or get some of it in your ear canal, I'm your man. Who'd you screw to become a saint? Look, you're done with Polycarp here. I got a case of the squirts that's draining the life out of me. Squat before me, my son. Hey! I just spoke to Wheat Corp. Turns out any idea entered in the science fair automatically becomes their property. That business model. You want it, you take it. Screw everyone. I strenuously voiced my objection, and they promised to send an acknowledgement of my contribution. Whatever it is, I get 10% or I break your foot. I'm Pat on the back, and I'm here to give you, Petey McDougal, a pat on the back. Courtesy of Wheat Corp. Is it a check or a direct deposit? Who needs money? Not me, Jack. Who needs money? Take it all back. Money won't save you from a heart attack or get your mother off of the crack. Money is evil, that's a fact. But nothing says thank you like a pat on the back. Have a great day. Let me guess. You got a white-hot ball of rage right between your eyes. You, you want to put two slugs in Wheat Thin's face so they can't even have an open casket. Uh, not exactly, but I am quite miffed. Easy there, psycho. You want revenge? No, I want justice. Godfather. 
Shit. Do you ever know what buttons to push? Uh, can I grab a ride home off of one of you? McCool and Teresa? That's not so. What would she even see in that guy? Oh, I don't know. Maybe his big shoulders, strong arms, those tree trunk legs. Ah, not to mention his dreamy eyes, square jaw, and the fact that he probably gives horse penis envy. Yeah, okay, but apart from that, he's got nothing! Teresa, get your ass in here! All right, kid. What's up with you and McCool? Oh, my God, he told you? No, he didn't, but ha! I knew it. Hey, that's entrapment! Right, Daddy? Sure is, Buttercup. Shame on you, Cook. If he didn't say nothing, I'm not saying nothing neither. Oh, is that so? Then you're grounded. Don't she have a right to counsel? No, and no phone call neither. Give me a phone. Fine, take it. And let us never speak of this incident that never occurred again. Jimmy, why don't you believe me? Cause we're talking about McCool. The guy's an overgrown boy scout. Sure, he's a ladies man, but he'd never mess with my daughter. Oh yeah? How do you like your Boy Scout now? Get my guns. All of them. Ooh, I can't wait! No more shooting bums down at the train yard! What? I mean, we're back, baby! How's everyone doing? Johnny, how's the golf game? Has your handicap improved, or are you still a golf ha! <laughs> Tough room. Is it something I said? What's, uh, what's going on? Uh, see if I ever buy you guys Chinese food again. Cookie, what the hell is this? A scumbag like McCool ain't worth doing time over, so I figured we should get him where it really hurts. I was gonna do that. I was gonna shoot him right in the nuts. Jimmy, why kill someone when you can ruin their life? Death is but a single moment. Misery is forever. You, you, you're good. Where'd you come up with that line? It's a Snake Hammer song. Oh, look, Roman Pervlansky decided to swing by. Jimmy, there's a perfectly innocent explanation for that picture. The one of you grabbing my daughter's keister? This I gotta hear. Teresa was drinking and driving and crashed the SUV in a ditch. You're a real piece of work, you know that? Trying to blame the victim. I'm the victim here. I've been suspended. They took everything. My badge, horse, my catchphrases. You got off easy, scumbag. But not for long. Mark my words. I am going to destroy you for what you did. <sighs> for Canada! Oh, come on, Daryl! Okay, now what? We give him a wedgie? No, wait, let's pants him. Shut up and let me do this. All right, wise guy. I'm gonna need you to put the old John Hancock on there. I'm afraid I can't do that. Gino, what are you doing? Ixnay on the Ames nay, Okfei. You got a choice. Either your signature or your brains are gonna be on that contract. I always wanted to say that. I am so sorry about this. Shut up! Sign over the rights to the app or get skull humped by a nine, bitch. This is not what I signed up for. This is exactly what you signed up for. Don't go limp on me now. Give me that, Gina. Hey, let go, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. I didn't even get to save it a moment. Welcome in the Queen's Beaver. Hmm. Check out! Herbert! of McCool stuffing his face with my lasagna. Send it in and say he's one of those guys who pukes after he eats. McCool's Bolivian? Are you out of your minds? McCool didn't grope me. He helped me after I drove the car into a ditch. What? Look, 
I drank a little that night, which is why I called McCool. Oh, crap. You drove our car into a ditch? You're grounded, young lady. I'm already grounded. Well, I'm temporarily ungrounding you so I can reground you. Yay! Wait, what? Teresa, we gotta talk about the real problem here. You drove drunk, crashed your car, and then called a freaking cop? You just pry the plates off, torch the car, and run. I can't believe you thought McCool would do something like this. You're grounded. You're all grounded. We're crucifying a guy for no reason. I gotta go make this right. Hang on, hang on. You mean this colossal screw up here has nothing to do with me? I don't know if I'm happy or lost. I'm too young to go to jail. Am I gonna die in there? Will people wanna fight me? Fight ya? No. Fight over ya? Yeah. Come on, let's chop him off, put him in quicklime, and get the hell out of here. We've snuffed out a life. We have to turn ourselves in. He's smoking. Yes, he was a handsome man, but that has nothing to do with... No, you dope. He's smoking. He's a freaking robot. Of course. We Corp is at the forefront of autobotics research. Whew, at least we're only guilty of robicide, not murder. Congratulations. You just sucked the last bit of fun out of this caper. Uh, oh, Jesus, geez. look at him. I know. Lucky bastard. Daytime TV, real. junk food, and a sweet track suit. It's that. all my dreams come true. It's pretty much your life already. Is that so? Do you see me in a track suit, Jimmy? Do you? Hey, straight. Jimmy, good to see you. Is that Cheech? You old bag of screws. How are you? Can I have some chips? Ha! Good old Cheech, always with the chips. McCool, what are you doing eating all that crap? I'm eating my feelings, Jimmy, and they're delicious. <laughs> Listen, about all that stuff in the papers, I had it all sorted out. The printing retractions as we speak. Really? Yeah, I talked to your boss and explained the mix-up. You'll be reinstated by the end of the week. That's wonderful news, Jimmy, just wonderful. So, if there's anything else I can do, name it. I mean it. Anything. Um, let me think if there's anything, uh, oh, yes. Maybe you could get the hell out of my house and my life forever, you son of a bitch! Uh, on second thought, I like not being the f up every week. You ruined my life, Jimmy. But then I fixed it, so we're good. That's not the point. After all we've been through, couldn't you at least give me the benefit of the doubt? I never understood how doubt is a benefit. McCool, you know how I am. I shoot first, aim later. Well, thanks to you, I'll be forever known as the Groping Mountie. Well, you shouldn't have gone behind my back about Teresa's accident. If I ratted to you, she would never have trusted me again. Well, now I don't trust you. After the Jolly Rogering you gave me in the press, I don't trust you either. Yeah, well, screw you, McCool. Screw you, Jimmy. All right, cut it out, you idiots. I can't stand listening to you hurting each other like this. You've been friends for a long time now. Arguing ain't gonna settle nothing. You two need to fight. Hmm. Okay, can we get out of here? You still gotta get what's yours, Petey. Let's rob the joint. Where are these clowns going? I wonder if Wheat Thin ever makes those robots have sex with each other. Now I know why you take the clothes off your action figures. Now get! Your head in the game. Maybe I can program one of them to sign back the rights to my calligramma later. The name still needs work. Way to think big, dumbass. How come to sign over the whole empire? That's not possible. You may know more about criminal enterprises, but when it comes to technology, I am the master. More like master beta to robot porn. I made one little joke. I read your blog, Android Lover 98. Oh dear God. This is so creepy. Turn them off. Give me a second. That should do it. If 
we die, Petey? I just want you to know, I never liked you. Fight! 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 You sure you won't be breaking some RCMP rule? Uh, yes. Uh, now that you mention it, we have to call this off. My hands are tied, Jimmy. You don't get reinstated until next week. Now go ahead, dance, boys. Damn. If we are going to do this, we will abide by Queensbury rules. Nuh-uh. Brooklyn rules are nothing. What are Brooklyn rules? There are no rules. But that's a rule. What? Don't you see? No rules is a rule in and of itself. I never thought of it that way. It's the exception paradox. It's quite fascinating, really, because... Would you two just fight already? Fight! 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 All right, let's do this. Here we go. This is it. I can't believe it's come to this. Me neither. You really hurt me, Jimmy. And you hurt me. Will somebody please hurt someone? It ain't nice finding out your own daughter calls someone else when she's in trouble. She's supposed to call family. I thought, in a way, I was family. But I'm her father! I may not be the best father, but if my kids are in trouble, I want to be the one to save the day. Hello? Dad, help! Gina and I are cornered by a legion of bloodthirsty robots! It's for you. Step away from those children, you robotic abominations! Prepare to have that finger snapped off and inserted into whichever orifice serves as your rectum. Nice one. Thank you. like that one Michael Bay movie. Which one? The terrible one. He ain't never made a terrible one, you dick. Jimmy, I'll distract the robots. You take Gina and Petey to safety. Uh, you take the kids, McCool. They stand a better chance with you. Petey, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Hey, Robo Jerks! You. What are you, nuts? Trust me, Jimmy. In case you didn't notice, I kind of got trust issues. I know, but you can trust me, Jimmy. Now jump! <laughs> That's for thinking I would ever grope your daughter. Ugh. That was a fucking waste of time. Weakton still owns Petey's app. There goes my 80%. Hey, we never agreed to keep talking. It'll be 90. That app's dead anyway. Now there's one that lies about how many calories you're eating. What are calories anyway? Is that some kind of food? Well, Jimmy, I assume after I beat off all those robots, there's no hard feelings. No, sir. And to show you we're square, I want you to be the first to sign my cast. It would be an honor. What about you, McCool? Any hard feelings? Be honest. Hard feelings? No, none at all. <laughs> <laughs> what, did he write something cute? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a big shot in the Gambini crime syndicate. But I ratted out my friends, so my family and I had to go into witness protection. The thing about witness protection is, you can't just start off being witnessly protected. You gotta learn to be a whole other person, and that ain't easy. So remember, you're no longer the Falcons, you're the McDougals. What's your name? Jimmy Falcone. No, your fake name. Oh, my fake name is Tommy McDougal. Don't say my fake name. I don't know your fake name. We'll come back to you. Now, Debbie, would you please get me a glass of water? Debbie, would you please get me a glass of water? Gina, your new name is Debbie. I know that. But get your own freaking water. Come on, people. You're moving in two weeks. One slip up and your cover will be blown. When do I get my nose job? There is no nose job. Boob job? No boob job. Hand job? There are no jobs. I thought you said I have to get a job. Yes, you have to get a job, Tommy. 
Who's Tommy? You're Tommy. I killed a Tommy once. Nice guy. Ah! And that was when they decided we should stick with our real first names. And then they shipped us off to Vagina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if any of you think changing our name is gonna change the Falcons, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Thanks for picking me up, Cook. No problem. But do you think tomorrow you could take the bus? I gotta take the kids to the doctor. You ever been on a bus? They smell. They're filled with derelicts and slobs and people filled with disease. Let the kids take the bus. Oh my god! Jimmy! Oh. Snake Hammer! They're playing tonight in Saskatoon! You know they've always been my favorite band! My sister and I never missed a single Snake Hammer concert. These guys do one show in ten years, and where do they go? Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Everybody loves Saskatoon. Oh my god. She's gonna be there. My sister's gonna be in Saskatoon tonight. Snake hammer, grab it by the handle. Snake hammer, put it in your toolbox. I'm gonna break out my leather pants and my hammer halter. And best of all, I'm gonna see Rosalie. Jimmy, we're going to Saskatoon. Like hell I am. What are you talking about? I could see my sister. This might be my only chance to ever see her again. But baby, it's Saskatoon. I'm a vagina guy. How could I go to work and look the other fellas in the eye? Oh, they wouldn't know. I'd know. Fine. Don't do me any favors. I'll go myself. Then who will make dinner? Well, it wouldn't kill you to miss a meal, you fat f Jimmy, Cookie, we'll have none of that public cussing. Your outdoor arguments are bringing too much attention, and you risk exposing yourself. I will if you will. <laughs> oh, here she goes. Don't take her seriously, McCool. She's just trying to piss me off. And it's working! Will you two stop? This kind of behavior is not Canadian. We are a polite people who keep our true feelings bottled up. If we must express ourselves, we do it with silent resentment, flowering looks, and suppressed rage, all the while maintaining a delicate balance of denial and shame. That's the Canadian way. Do you think you can do that? You take denial, I got shame. Splendid. My workday is done. Oh, is that a Cuban? Mr. Goody Two-Shoes smoking illegal cigars. Nothing illegal about it. The government of Canada does not maintain antiquated foreign policies. And our beer tastes better too. For Canada, proud to be shameful. Hey, Petey, how about a little Grand Theft Auto? Gina, I'm studying. I don't have time for a video game. Who said anything about a video game? <laughs> You're so funny, Gina. Funny? Funny how? You mean the way I talk? What's funny about it? Funny like I'm a clown? I amuse you? I make you laugh? I'm here to f amuse you? What do you mean, funny? How the f am I funny? Yeah, like a clown. <laughs> now that's funny. You don't even know for sure that your sister will be there. I do know for sure. And if you'd taken the time to get to know my sister, you'd know she never misses a snake hammer show. But you didn't take time to get to know my sister because you didn't take the time to get to know me. Because you don't pay attention. I do so pay attention. Jeez, you're not going to believe what I found out about Canada. You can legally buy Cubans here. I know. I got a closet full of them. Mumbo! Mambo! Mambo! Please, senor, let us see. Wow! You can buy anything in Canada. Me and Cheech are going to the cigar store. Tell your mother we'll be back in 20. Hospital. <laughs> ah, this is the life. Sure is. Makes you wonder, why can't you get these in the States anyway? Beats me. Cuba has a lot to offer. 
cigars, baseball players, Gooding Jr. I would like to go to Cuba one day and say, why did you make that gay boat movie? No, that was Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't want to argue politics with you. Let's just enjoy our smokes. All right, bye everyone. I'm off to see Aunt Rosalie. See you in the morning. Hell with a snake! Where's the car? Jimmy! Petey, where's your father? I like eggs. We meet again, old friend. Where the hell is he? That stupid, selfish jackass! I'm gonna kill him. This is Jimmy. I'm trapped inside my phone. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm just busting your balls. I can't believe you! You took the car when you knew how important this was to me! I may miss my sister if you don't get home soon, so you better call me the second you get this, you stupid, selfish f***! Gee! <laughs> hey, that was great, Jimmy. Great smokes, great booze, great conversation. We ought to spend more time together. Cheech, I'm with you all the time. Wait, that was you? Keep an eye open. I gotta take a leak. Hang on, I gotta go more. Look, I don't wanna get into some kind of pissing contest with you. Why? Because I can pee farther? Is that a challenge? You're on. Okay, we'll call it a draw. I'm gonna kill him. I am so gonna kill him. No, no, I'm gonna almost kill him. Then let him heal, then I'll kill him. No, then I'll almost kill him. Cuba Gooding Jr. was in Boys in the Hood with Lawrence Fishburne, who was in Apocalypse Now with Dennis Hopper. You inconsiderate child. Cookie, please. I'm in the middle of a game here. You took the car. My only chance to see my sister, and you took the freaking car. Oh, man, the concert. Cook, I'm sorry. You're always sorry. What good does that do me? You never listen. You only care about yourself. No, I'm caring about you now. See, here I am standing and talking about caring. If that ain't caring... Stop it! My sister's gone, the concert's over, and so are we. You no longer live here. Fine! I'll sleep in the car! Where'd I put it? Where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do? How'd I get into this mess? I've never seen her this angry before. I mean, we've had some big fights, but I've never had to talk to myself for this long. I wonder if that's the same RCMP Special Agent Straight McCool that I know. Jimmy, what are you doing here at this hour? Cookie threw me out and it's my own damn fault. I have nowhere to go. Oh my goodness, come in. You'll catch your death. Wow, this is the coolest place in the world. It's like Caesar's Palace meets Old Yeller. Precisely what I told my decorator, Jimmy. Have a seat. Thanks for letting me crash here. My pleasure. Now, let's go over the rules. Rule number one, no feet on the table. Rule number two, no smoking. Rule number three, no littering. No writing on foggy windows, no usage of the word irregardless. Brush after every meal, lights out at 10.50, and no masturbating where I can hear it. Cheese and whiskers, it's like Toronto Union Station around here. Jimmy, Cookie wanted me to give you a message. I, I want to make sure I get this right. And take your f***ing uncle with you. What? I'm sorry, Cook. I screwed up. I don't know what's wrong with me. You deserve better, and I'll try harder. I'm tired of your apologies, Jimmy. This may have been the only chance to ever see my sister again in my life. I don't see how I'll ever be able to forgive you. I can't even forgive myself. I'm such a jerk. There you go. Me, me, me. I'm a jerk. I'm an idiot. I'm an asshole. All you think about is yourself. So go lead your selfish life without me. Ugh. <sighs> What about my clothes? And my piano? And my safe? And my anvil? And my feather? Ow! I'm telling you, I've never seen her like this. This was beyond anger. She didn't yell once. 
It was terrifying. You know what, Jimmy? I got lady troubles too. Mine is a real ball buster. Nothing I do is ever good enough, and one of these days, I'm just gonna go up to her and say, I won't take this anymore, Mom! You know what, kid? Today's your lucky day. I got me a little cabin in the suburbs. Come on by and we'll commiserate. Commiserate loves company. Schwa, schwa, schwa. <laughs> Women, schwa, 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 slut. <laughs> schwa, schwa. <laughs> Lonely. There, there, schwa, schwa. You know, me and Cheech, we got a little cabin. You know, Premier, we got a little cabin. Little cabin. Schwa, schwa. Schwa. My Premier. I didn't even vote for you. Then the joke's on me! I didn't think you were old enough to vote. Chug, 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 chug! Be at peace. If you can't enjoy how it goes down, you'll never like how it comes back up. Man, I never thought they'd all show up. I was just being polite. Hey, Jimmy, isn't that the guy you whacked because he figured out who you were? Hey, yeah, I hate when they come back. Hello, Jimmy. And you must be Uncle Cheech. We then, hey, listen, I gotta ask you something. I'm not sure how to put this, but didn't I kill you? Actually, that was my robot double. And I'm glad you whacked him, because I think he was trying to kill me. What? You have robots? Of course, Jimmy. I'm a master inventor. I wouldn't be nearly as wealthy as I am if I didn't have an army of robots working to undermine my competitors. But I've said too much. What? You have robots? Uh, just the one, but you killed it. Oh, dice. Excuse me. Come on, Jimmy, let's go play. Look, even the dead guy's having fun. I'm not really in the party mood, Cheech. I gotta get Cookie back. I gotta think of something big, something huge, something so grand, there's no way she won't forgive me. Like what? I'm thinking an Xbox. Jimmy, I've been divorced six times. I think I know a thing or two about marriage. She threw you out. It's over. Time to live a little. I don't know. Look, you can wallow and mope for months, but let me tell you something. She ain't moping. She's out there jumping up on tables, shaking her money maker, rubbing her hoo-ha all over the bar, and buying drinks for every guy who pinches her onion, all in your dime. That sounds like our wedding night. Move over. The kid is back. <gasps> What in the Queen's name is going on? Jimmy, what have you done? It's not my fault. It just sort of happened organically. Here, have a beer. That one's on you. That's it. Jimmy, Cheech, you are no longer welcome here. Everybody out. Not so fast, Mounty. Premier O'Shea. Under the laws of eminent domain, your cabin has been annexed by the great province of Saskatchewan. So saith the Premier. But, Your Honor, eminent domain can only be used in times of war. Then I declare war on your lame ass, so piss off! Thank you for hearing me out, sir. Hey, McCool! Bring back some Cheetos! Chin up in the face of adversity. There are those worse off than you. Stand tall and carry on, and enough with the sad music! Ah, Peter McDougal. The only member of the family who's never let me down. <laughs> I stand corrected. Hey, Teresa, wanna play Candyland? Sorry, Gina, but I stopped playing kids' games once I got tits. You sure? I changed it a little. That's pretty good. You're funny. Funny? Funny how? And I would really think hard about your answer. Don't be alarmed, Cookie. I found him with his tongue stuck to a lamppost. He has a mild concussion and he's lost his mind. Oh, Petey, why didn't you tell me you lost your mind? He'll be all right, thanks to me. All he needs is a good night's rest. Apologize. I don't know how to thank you. No need. You're going through enough yourself. I know all about you and Jimmy. He's been staying at my house, which I've been forced to leave. That selfish blob of spit. Tell me about it. I gave him a whole list of rules, but it never dawned on me that I had to add and flush. He's a pig. So, where are you staying? I'm hoping to find a dead deer and sleep inside its carcass. Is that as gross as it sounds? You have no idea. Then you have to stay here. You wouldn't be in this mess if it weren't for me. Come on in. We'll make some more mess. <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate. 
I'm kidding. I insist. You'll stay here tonight where it's safe and warm. I suppose it's preferable to a dead deer carcass. All right, but on the condition that there's no hanky-panky. How about just panky? <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Is that my lipstick? Who's funny now? <gasps> Did you use my lipstick to draw a picture of some poor girl named Thursa? It's you, dumbass. Whatever, I want that lipstick back, you little squirt. One more step and the lipstick gets it. You wouldn't try me. No, no, she means it. And you have a big ass. That's it. <laughs> Give it back to me. <sighs> What's this about? She stole my lipstick. She wouldn't play with me and she called me funny, so I swiped it and made a hangman game where I killed her and told her she had a fat ass, so you can't blame me. You girls don't know how lucky you are to have a sibling. I was an only child, no one to play with but myself. That came out wrong. Teresa, put your things where Gina can't get them. Gina, use your artistic talent to draw happy things like rainbows and unicorns. Problem solved. That was really impressive, McCool. Jimmy would just let them fight and then make fun of the loser. They're good girls, Cookie. Not outwardly, of course. Is this better? I'll take that as friendly sarcasm, Gina. You are quite funny. Go, Goldie, fight him! Jimmy, you bet on the bear? Does he s in the woods? Jimmy. This is such a fantastic thing, you schwa schwa, to have this house and this party and the schwa schwa schwa. I don't know. I've been trying to enjoy myself, but the truth is, I can't stop thinking about Cookie and what I've done. Mano, what you do is a service for the whole community. You are a mother schwa schwa genius <laughs> to create all this and then get rid of that schwa schwa mounty. And he moves in with your wife? What? Son of a schwa! I gotta do something to win my wife back, and it's gotta be even grander than an Xbox. Somehow, I gotta get Cookie together with her sister. But how? Jimmy, I can help you. What could you do? I'm a billionaire entrepreneur, world-renowned inventor, decorated scientist, and believe it or not, I'm a heterosexual man who understands women. All right, let's get these two broads together. You know, it's a proven fact that anything we can do, they can do better. They like to hear that. <laughs> Little Gina. Oh, Teresa. Don't look, man. Don't look. Oh, Cookie. No wonder she wanted me to do the vacuuming. I'll get it. McCool, I'm here to see Cookie, but I want to say I'm sorry about the party and everything. Thank you, Jimmy. I hope you're not alarmed by my presence in your home, but I assure you nothing happened that would cause me to be less than proud. Uh, so does that mean you did her or you did not do her? God, no. Good. Then these are for you. Why, Jimmy, your apology was valiant enough. You didn't need to buy me flowers. I didn't. We broke a vase in your living room and I thought you'd want them. Now get the hell out of my house. Cookie! Didn't I tell you to f off? Because if I didn't, I'd be more than happy to tell you again. What are you smirking at? Get ready to forgive me. Over my dead cookie! Rosalie! Oh my god! It's really you! I, I never thought I'd see you again! You just disappeared! One day you, Jimmy, the kids were just gone! I can't believe you're really here! I talk to you every day in my head! That's because you've always had voices in your head, you crazy bitch! I missed you so much, you painted hoe. Jimmy, how did you make this happen? I called in a favor. Baby, I screwed up. And I had to fix it for you, because I love you. I love you too, you big cheese ball. I love you too, you big cheese ball. I'm sorry, that was weird. Weird. Cheese ball. Weird. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It was a long flight. I'm just a little tired. 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 What's going on? Nothing. It's just the excitement of seeing my sister. 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 sister.
Oh my god! Gimme! Cookie! Hit the dirt! Oh, but didn't use the nuclear battery. Busted. What the hell is going on? That wasn't your sister. It was a robot. Look, I'm sorry, but there was no way I could get to Rosalie for real. This was the only thing I could think of to get you to stop hating me. So, would you mind going inside and tossing me my other piano and I'll be on my way? Jimmy, I never hated you, and I never could. How many men would go to the trouble of building a nuclear-powered robot sister for their wife? Six? One. And I got him. And you're never gonna lose him. 